let's talk about the title of, of Ruby's uh, book, Earth Hates Me, an inside book at being a teenager. As you can see, <laughs> Ruby is a comedian. What, you start at three years old, they had you out there, something like that? Yeah, I mean, the first time I was at UCB, I was in my mom's, like, arms. Yeah, so she's, let's say that she's gotten into her gift early, and at 10 years old, you were writing for, uh, what Hello is it, Giggles. Hello Giggles, right? Ruby's Corner. So Ruby is, um, I'm going to leave you for a little bit, right, but I want it. you all to clap for Ruby Carp, okay? And um, you know what? I think what we all know is that what is really beautiful is funny, because funny is smart, yeah. right? So yeah. smart is beautiful. Millions are real. That's right. So you're Ruby Carp, everyone. All right. Hey, guys. Um, so I am going to actually open this with a spoken word. Uh, not really funny at all, but uh, we're going to go with it anyways. Uh, this is called 10 Things I've Learned in High School. 10 Things I've Learned in High School. One, tears will fall. Let your feelings run free. Cry in the bathroom. Cry on a stoop. Cry in the middle of Times Square. You deserve to feel. Two, find the humor in the darkness that comes, haunting you like your own personal horror story, because, oh my God, could you please walk faster? The world isn't out to get you. Three, learning through memorization is not education. Learning is feeling. Learning is debating. Learning is not a textbook. Four, your grades are not a reflection of who you are. Do not let a test define you. Five, society is like an ocean. In a picture, it's perfect. But underneath, there are sharp shells and ripped tides pulling you down with a fast sensation before you even get to catch your breath. You find yourself underneath the beauty, crashing down against the jagged surface, drowning in Snapchats and who wore it best. But we all jump right back into the waves for more. Six, we are all equals. We were all born with baby hands and we grew and some of us are able to run faster or breathe harder or can jump higher, but some of us learn how to slow down and realize that we are all living on the same earth at the same time. Seven, we cannot reach equality with hate. Sexism won't stop if women are bringing down other women. Sexism won't stop if we let boys be boys. Equality starts with education, educating those who don't know what feminism means, meaning that no matter what gender you are, you are of equal value. There is a sea of people seeing women as objects, objectifying our bodies like we are your dolls, dolling ourselves up for society's tsunami, demolishing all hope at the future being female, because when I stood with her, I was told I was too aggressive. Number eight, do not let anyone tell you to be quiet. Tell them you were just getting started. Nine, learn to validate you. You cannot control what other people think, but you can control the choices you make. It is okay to be alone. Ten, you are enough. High school is petty and boring, but find the people who make you want to exist. Don't let the man running our country take away your identity. You can persist. Join the club you've always wanted to. Start the club. Start a march. Fight for equality. Fight for something that matters. Reach for the high school experience you want to have. Reach for the life experience you want to have. You are not alone. I believe you. Me too. So, they introduced me as a comedian. Uh, and you're probably wondering, who is this Zoe Deschanel wannabe and why did she just do a spoken word that had literally nothing to do with comedy? Uh, the reason behind that, my friends, is because high school is funny. High school is very awkward and very ironic and very uncomfortable and we all take ourselves very seriously, as you can tell because I take myself very seriously in how I speak. Um, and the thing is about that is that we never really take the time to take a step back and not only reflect but also laugh at ourselves. So um, I'm going to unpack some of the stuff I just spewed at you because you totally did not know that was coming. Um, so number one, tears will fall. I cry a lot. I'm a very emotional person. Uh, this is something I'm very open about. Uh, I wrote a book and it's nonfiction, and I literally devoted 20 pages to writing about two boys that broke my heart 
all true stories, um, and they are now in published books, and we're unaware of it. Uh, so, you know, I'm very, I'm a very open person. Uh, I, my school escalator crashed the other day, and I literally started sobbing because I just could not walk up six flights of stairs. Uh, extreme first world problem, but, you know, we're here, we're going through it, puberty is awesome. Um, I feel like I'm probably pretty much done with puberty, but, like, we're getting through it. It's totally cool. Uh, but something we all need to talk about and we need to be more open about is our emotions. Why are we not telling people how we're feeling? Our generation is obsessed with casual, we're obsessed with talking very lightly, not really treading on the stuff that's uncomfortable. But the thing is about comedy is that comedy is all about being uncomfortable. It's all about showing your weirdest self. It's about saying the things that people are afraid to say. And the thing is, we need to start saying those things because we can, we have the ability to, we're just too afraid to. So that's why I cry in public most of the time. And if you shameless self, self promo, follow me on Instagram, all I do is post photos of me crying. So just check it out. Uh, number two, um, what was number two? Uh, I, can't, I don't even know my own writing. Uh, number two, uh, one, tears of life, it's crying, Times Square. Number two. Well, I can do it, I can do it. One, tears will fall, let your feelings run free. Cry in the bathroom, cry in a stoop, cry in the middle of Times Square. Two, oh, find the humor in the darkness that comes. Thank you. I'm great at this, uh, you know, wrote it myself. Uh, this is actually the most important message of the entire speech, so here we are. Um, finding the humor is something, again, like I was just saying, we all need to start doing because we all, take high school very seriously and it is very serious because adults will try and invalidate your emotions they'll try and tell you oh it'll get better in 10 years ah you won't remember high school when you're out in high school but the thing is you're going through it right now and right now it sucks so why is everyone telling you not to care about it but the thing is if we're not constantly laughing at ourselves if we're not constantly showing people our weirdest self then we're not really doing anything because we're kind of just living in a misery I think we all need to start laughing at everything and not at uncomfortable moments. Like, please don't go somewhere and like someone's in the middle of a breakdown and you're like, haha, that's hilarious. Wrong, not the idea I was going for. But if you find yourself in a weird situation or if you find yourself in a situation where you're like, oh my God, is this really happening to me? Earth hates me, life is ridiculous. Laugh at the irony of the situations you're in because they are really funny. Uh, three, learning through memorization is not education. I don't know about you guys, I'm terrible at math and science. Uh, yeah. <laughs> shout out to all my artists out there. Um, and the thing is, I, in high school, I go to a very test-based school, which if you have severe anxiety, testing's not your thing. Um, so school was really hard for me because all my teachers would just be like, read this textbook and memorize it, which for some people might be really easy to do, but for me, I can't even remember the words to my own spoken word. So, oh yeah, thank you. Clap it out. So, learn that finding your own method to learning is okay. Sometimes your teachers won't give you those tools and you're gonna need to find them for yourself. And you can do it. You are smart, which leads me to number four. Your grades are not a reflection of who you are. I failed math, I think like three times, three out of the four years of high school. It was when I got an 80 on a math test, my mom hung it up on our refrigerator because she was like, wow, you passed. That's because I'm a smart person. It's not because I can't do math or science that I'm not smart. I, in fact, uh, fun fact about the college admissions process, I published a book, I've hosted a professional comedy show for seven years, I spoke at the UN, I've done, I've done stuff, and I maintained a good average in high school, yet I was still rejected from almost every college I applied to because of my SAT scores. Because I can't take a test like other people. And a lot of our society, a lot of our education system is now based on scores and numbers and you are not a number. Some people are really good at school and testing and stuff, but that doesn't mean, they are smart in that sense, but that doesn't mean that if you can't do that, that you're not smart. People are smart in their own ways and we forget this because the world we live in is so focused on 
your grades and your numbers and your statistics, but you are more than a statistic, you are a person, and you will end up where you're supposed to end up. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry, go for it. I wanted to let it happen. Um, five, society is like an ocean. This analogy kind of makes no sense, um, but it is also kind of true. People say that our generation is obsessed with technology and we're all consumed with our phones, which can be true at moments, but we are a lot more than just that small definition. Social media for me is one of the biggest anxiety causers. Um, I, I suffer with anxiety. I go to therapy, Kristen, shout out to my therapist, great woman. Um, the thing is about anxiety is that stuff like Snapchat and seeing what everyone is doing without me and seeing other people constantly doing stuff, it kills me because I'll just be like, oh my god, everyone is hanging out without me and I am alone and have no friends, ha ha ha. Um, and then I laugh at myself uh, and my jokes that I make to myself alone in my room because I'm an only child. Um, but the thing is, the problem with social media is that it can be used for really great things, but it often is not used for that. It's often used for making people feel left out or posting something just because you know it'll get to that one person who will see it. And sometimes you need to detox. Sometimes just delete the app for a day or two. See how it feels. You don't have to delete your entire profile, but try turning off your phone and just seeing what life is like without constantly refreshing your page because it really does make a difference in not only your self-esteem, but just your general vibe and aura. Um, number six, we are all equals. This is something that I know should seem obvious, but to a lot of people, it's really not. A lot of people genuinely don't see this as something that we all need to be constantly vocal about. And, advocating for because people just assume that people know because I live in New York and New York is one of the most liberal <laughs> yeah New York uh, New York is one of the most liberal places so it's very accepting and people are like oh yeah feminism yeah that's a thing but a lot of people don't even know what feminism means a lot of people don't see the point in being vocal about equality and if we're not constantly being vocal about it not enough people are gonna know about it uh, so use the voice you have to advocate for that and tell people because I know you might think that telling one person or explaining feminism to your friend won't make a difference, but it will because with every person you tell, you're just helping another person find out about something that everyone should just believe because there's nothing morally wrong with just seeing everyone as equals. Don't know why that's like a hard concept, but it is for a lot of people. Um, number seven, we cannot reach equality with hate. This is something that a lot of people talk about, but talk about in a very hypocritical sense. There seems to be, at least from where I come from in the city, there's this battle of who is the best feminist. It's, oh, who can be the most politically correct? Who can correct the person the most? And I find my friends like screenshotting people's stuff, posting them on public Instagrams being like, everyone like go wreck this girl because she said something politically wrong or something like that. The key to helping people who don't understand things like feminism and being politically correct in all of these ideas is education. You can't go at people with attacking them because they're not gonna wanna hear what you have to say. You have to approach people in an educational manner. You have to approach people in a sense that they will understand. You have to explain things to people in a calm ma matter as opposed to posting on social media and telling people to cyberbully them. Because if you're a girl telling other girls to attack another girl, that's not feminism, that's girl on girl hate. Something that social media definitely doesn't help us with is girls supporting girls. Because you can post a selfie and have a bunch of friends like it. I can't believe I'm saying the word selfie out loud. Um, this is happening. But uh, my friends will comment on my stuff all the time, be like, oh, pretty, whatever, and stuff, which is awesome. But then also, I don't know if you guys were had Ask FMs, but I had this thing called Ask FM in middle school. And Ask FM was this forum where if you had a profile, you could anonymously ask people questions. You didn't have to have a profile. You could just send people anonymous questions, literally just setting people up to be bullied. But 
we all still did it anyways. Uh, <laughs> um, and the problem with that was I would get stuff like, oh my god, you're so fat, and oh my god, you're the worst. And I'd be like, oh, thank you. Uh, um, but the thing is, that is literally the worst kind of use of social media. I don't think anyone I know has an Ask FM anymore, but it was a phase that we all went through. And if we all, every single one of us here today, goes on social media and actively in their minds tell themselves, I'm going to spread positivity today. This is all I'm going to do. I'm going to put out good vibes into the world and make everyone feel great about themselves. You are making someone's day that much brighter and helping that person not feel that much bad about themselves because we look for, to social media for validation sometimes. It's inevitable, it's there, we get likes, we get followers, that is asking for attention and validation, which isn't a bad thing, because that's a human thing to do. And being on social media is fun, because you get to be connected to people, but we have to do it with caution, and we have to do it knowing that people have emotions, and you have to have empathy for others if you're gonna be using these apps in the way that we use them. Thank you. Uh, number eight, do not let anyone tell you to be quiet. Tell them you were just getting started. This is a message that we all need to listen to actively. I've had so many friends tell me, oh, uh, I support equality, but I'm not a feminist because it's not aggressive. I mean, it's not aggressive, it's not attractive. Um, and that's not something any of us should live by. Feminism is attractive. Being a feminist is the most attractive thing you could possibly be, and if someone particularly a romantic interest, doesn't think that, then they are not worth your time. I've had a lot of friends tell me that they think being a feminist is unattractive because boys won't like them. And if boys don't like you because you're a feminist, they are the worst and you need to tell them that they should stop being the worst because don't do that. Um, if you have a voice, you need to use it. We need to constantly be telling people, and that doesn't even mean in like a get up on stage and tell people way. It can be as small as just a dinner table conversation. Just constantly telling people that these morals and ideals are right and good and just, that's making a difference in the world. It can be as small as that. And if you don't feel confident enough to get up and write a spoken word and put all your emotions into it, that's okay. You can make a difference in other ways than just going on stage and putting yourself out there. It can be as small as writing an article online or just talking to your friends. Number nine, um, learn to validate you. This one, I'm still grappling with this one. I feel like in high school, it's really easy to lose ourselves in who we like and who we want validation from. But we need to learn that if you have a crush on someone or you want the attention of someone else, if they don't give that to you or if they're not giving it to you, that doesn't mean that you are not an amazing person. We can't define ourselves by the people who like us and validate us and tell us we're good enough because we need to start accepting with ourselves that we are good enough. Because there's no way that you can go out into the world and be a grounded human being if you're not constantly reminding yourself that you are enough and that you are great and beautiful and confident. We need to stop. Thank you. <laughs> I'm kind of a hypocrite because all my comedy is self-deprecating. Um, but we need, the thing is, yeah, my comedy is self-deprecating, but that doesn't mean that I don't believe that I am great and beautiful and funny and cool because why are we afraid of saying that to people? Why are we afraid of telling people, no, I think I'm awesome? Because we're all so, we're all constantly apologizing for ourselves. And we can't be doing that. Otherwise, no one's gonna wanna listen to us. To us. Um, I just think that if we all stop constantly, and this is a lot to ask, because it's not as easy as just, oh, I'm gonna change entirely all of my insecurities and just be a better person. Not that easy, but if we all just once a day tell ourselves something that we love about ourselves, look in the mirror and tell ourselves, you look nice today, write in a journal, this is a good deed I did today, and constantly spread positive energy, then we'll start feeling it within ourselves. Because it's not about the external, it's about the internal. And we all forget that. Thank you. Number 10, 
you are enough. And going back to what I said in the thing, high school is petty and boring, but find the people who make you want to exist. I, the love of my high school, my high school sweetheart is my best friend. And not in like a rom-com, you've got male way, like my best friend is the love of my life. And not, we like didn't fall in love, but she is the only person who throughout high school was there with me from the beginning to the end, was there with me when I was crying about some stupid boy, was there crying with me when I got a bad grade on a math test. Your friends are the people who are going to get you through life. Like they were saying before, Every, you can't make a difference without other people because otherwise you're just a person. We need to constantly be reminding our friends of how much we love them and appreciating our friends more because I know we tell our moms, mom, you tell me I'm pretty all the time and we tell our friends like, you guys think I'm awesome but whatever romantic interest I have doesn't. Those are the people that matter. Your mom, your friends, your parents, your guardians, those people in your life those are the people who are going to be there for you when other people aren't. And we need to learn to appreciate those people more than we appreciate whoever we're seeking validation in. Because those people that we're seeking validation in should think you're awesome because you are. Uh, I think I'll, I'll wrap it up with saying, I my whole thing is I spread positivity and I like to talk about all these things and there is a car that has been going off this entire time and it's really just I need someone to control themselves um, I try and spread positivity and I talk about all this optimism but I will say that it is a lot easier said than done I love talking about validating yourself and finding your emotions within or whatever I say but it really isn't that easy, and I know it's not, but it's a process. Things take time. You're not just gonna wake up one day and be like, I am the best. It's a life process. My mom still deals with it. Every human being deals with it. It's not easy to just wake up one day and love yourself. But if you just go step by step each day, wake up and tell yourself, today I'm not going to let other people ruin my day. Because you are the person that makes up your day. Other people might get you down and might change how good that day is, but you can make sure that you go to bed each night in a good mood. Because you control your, I mean, you don't really control your own happiness because like life gets in the way and like earth hates me, whatever. But you control who you are and you control who's in your life, who you surround yourself with, what your environment is. And if you are hanging out with people you don't wanna hang out with, don't be friends with them. I know it's really hard to just disconnect yourself from negative people and just disconnect yourself from negative vibes and stuff. I've hated the school I've gone to since the second I got there. I can't just leave high school, but I can change the way I look at it. I don't go to school every day being like, well, I hate this place even though like sometimes I do. I go to school each day and I'm like, all right, how can I make a difference here? How can I influence the people here and help them not hate school so much and make this place so negative. There's no windows in my school, why? But that's not something I can control. So instead, I started an improv club at my school. I joined the feminism club. I stage managed my school's musical. I kept myself occupied so that I wasn't constantly bored and hating life. It's really, really easy to get negative and hate high school and hate the circumstances you're in. Trust me, I know. But we can't keep waking up with this negative energy. Because if we are, then we're not helping ourselves. And there's, this place is beautiful. I, 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 oh my god, things are falling and the wind is happening. Can't control that. Life happens. But appreciate the environments you're in. Appreciate how beautiful this place is. Look around at your school and find the stuff that you love. If you don't feel comfortable with a parent or a friend, find a teacher that you can confide in and become friends with them. In middle school, I had lunch with my English teacher every single day for like a year. And that, that was one of the best friends I've ever had. And I'm still friends with that teacher and I visit my middle school all the time. Middle school also, let me just say, I am so sorry for all of you going through seventh grade. I understand, I have been there. I had an Ask FM in seventh grade and it was the worst experience of my life. I, I was talking about this earlier. I used to have three 
thousand photos on my Instagram because I didn't realize that people could follow me and see what I was posting. So I just take photos from different angles and I'd be like, hashtag simply me. Here I am again, also in the same couch position. And I had a Tumblr and I had all of these communities online. But the thing is, I found people who were in the same boat as me. I made music videos on YouTube and befriended other random girls in like North Carolina who were also just as weird and uncomfortable as I was. I found people and communities that I related to and connected with because the internet is at our fingertips. We are so capable of finding other people in this world. We have things like Maverick that connect us with other powerful young women who want to make a change and want to spread positivity and want to see the light in the world. So use those things that you have, use these resources to find other people that you also connect with because you can. Um, <laughs>